Hello. All right. I guess we can start. So uh, today I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, programming, specifically Tweetdeck, which is a Tweetdeck client. If you're not familiar with it, I'm just gonna run the thing so you can see how it works. It's basically a wrapper for the Tweetdeck website with a lot of hacky bullshit added on top of it. Yeah, so uh, I'm using my alt account on Twitter because, uh, well, I used it in the uh, introduction video for uh, TweetDuck. If you haven't seen that yet, it's on my YouTube channel. And we're gonna have some food porn here. Yeah. I, I can't remember, because um, I definitely put a uh, search for horse, right? Still got it in the history. I had a search for horse there, um, which turns out to be a, a great way of testing stuff because everybody tweets about horses all the fucking time. So if I ever need to test notifications, I just add a search for horse and I get like 50 in a minute. I might have to take this down. Or or make it bigger. <laughs> or smaller, so that we could see more of food. Made the whole thing food porn. Uh, Alright. Well, see, if I get too hungry, I'll just turn this off. <laughs> Might be a good idea to add... Um, um, where is it? I had a thingy that would show chat on the screen. That thing might be gone. Whoops. I'm definitely the best at this. Why not regular porn instead? Actually, it, when I had search for horse, it turns out I got a little lucky there, but it turns out a lot of people have some um, nude tweets that have the word horse in them. Absolutely no idea why. <laughs> but I had to turn off the previews for that, just in case. Not expecting the same to happen with food porn. Alright. So I got... I got GitHub ready. So today we're gonna focus on these three things. Uh, it's just some small stuff apart from the plugin system. Because I'm still getting used to the whole streaming while programming. So these two will be like small things that I can do in a couple minutes. But, I have actually done some work on the plugin system. So, here is a very early version of the plugins. So if you right click or go to settings, you can access the plugin screen. So, the reason I added this well, of course, there are some features that are not really fit to be like in the in the program itself. So it's nice to have some uh, plugin support so that people can uh, create their own. 
so people can create their own plugins for the program. Even though the whole thing is sort of limited, but I haven't really had a whole lot of feedback on this from actual developers who would be interested in creating plugins. So blame those people. Uh, but I am down to making it better and adding some... Extending the whole thing eventually based on what developers want to do with it. But another reason I wanted a plugin system is that some of the features are stuff that not everybody wants. And if you look into the settings, it's getting a little crowded. I'm gonna redesign this eventually, but... One way of having more settings... And... Uh, well, one way of having more options that the user can choose is by having by moving them into plugins and of course if they're separated completely from the main code base it's not going to uh, if you don't want those features they're not going to be compiled and ran anyways so it's good for performance as well so one of the first things that i decided to move into a plugin is reverting tweet deck design changes Recently, Twitter decided, thanks Twitter, to change the website. So when, this is how it used to look. Right now, if you hover over a tweet, you can see the action menu and stuff. It's all aligned to the right. Maybe we will find a discussion somewhere. Maybe not, I don't know. But this is how it used to be, right? Okay, now it's gone. Well, without... If, if I disable the plugin, you can see immediately what it does. So that's one of the features of the plugin system that you can enable all of the plugins at runtime, basically. So this is how TweetDeck looks normally now. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a little cluttered, but I understand that some people would want it like this. So this is why I moved it into the plugin system. As for how the actual plugin is constructed, I go into... Uh, and I'm gonna have to find the folder now. Hang on. Okay, so this is the folder with the program. This is debug, so there's a lot of bullshit. But here we have plugins, and there are official and user plugins, so uh, the user ones have their own category. Each plugin has a metadata file, which is over here. And this has the description, author, version, stuff like that. Eventually I will add a way of requiring a certain version of the program, just because of features that uh, will be implemented later for specific needs of developers, so that uh, you don't accidentally try to run a code that won't work with an old version of TweetDuck. And then each plugin can either have or it can have browser.js and or notification.js. So uh, if you go, uh, no, if you look into settings and show up an example notification. Uh, plugins can modify these as well. So you can either have a plugin that modifies either of them or both at the same time. Although the notifications are a lot more limited. So you have a basic structure of a plugin. Enabled runs basically as soon as the program starts. So uh, 
I am creating new elements because at this point the basic document object model is ready. So I can modify the head with new styles, I can modify the mustaches, which is a framework that Twitter or Tweetedek uses to generate content. So that way I can modify the layout and turns out it works. If I change the mustaches, it works immediately, which is beautiful. And then uh, the ready event for when uh, uh, Tweetedek loads into this screen. So you can set up all your events and stuff like that. And of course, the disabled event. So if I shut it down, there are a couple of things that I'm going to work on with the plugin system later. Because first I want to focus on uh, these top two issues here. But um, basically, and it's probably not the best solution, but the program takes all of the plugins and creates a single file out of them, which is gonna be a lot of fun to debug because the uh, when you have an error, it will show the line number. But of course, because we did that constructs a single file, it's gonna be all over the place. So I could try to make each plugin a, uh, a separate script. I'm, I'm, I need to test how well the performance is going to work out with that. But first, I want to work on this. So one thing that, uh, oh yeah, I closed it. Oh, I just ran it again. One thing that Tweetdeck supports compared to the original, or one thing that Tweetdeck supports compared to the original Tweetdeck client, which Twitter discontinued, is the back button and forward button on your mouse. I just, so if I use the forward button, even if I hover over a link, will focus on the tweet. Then I can go back either in a single column or move out and go back with all of the columns. I really like how that works. It turns out that if I for example open an image I can't go back unless I click on the close button or click outside. So I, I'm gonna make the back button work with this. Which is gonna be fun because I completely forgot how the whole thing works. The thing with the back button is that uh, I think I'm using some really hacky Windows API bullshit. Yes. Hacky Windows API bullshit is about correct. But this should be pretty easy. Right, so here we have the back button and I actually need to open the Tweetedek website so that I can edit it, but I'm gonna need to log out and change the account to my alt. So give me a second for that. So this is the website. Uh, Firefox doesn't have like much support for fancy scroll bars, so it, that's a little annoying. Also, one of the reasons I didn't want to use the website. So. 
So if I open an image, let's check these burgers. Can I inspect the whole thing here? Okay. So we can get the ID of the modal dialog. Right, it's still there, but it's invisible. So now it's invisible and it's visible. Nice. Now we just find the close button. Dismiss. And click it. So that works. I'm not sure how long this stream is gonna but uh, if it goes as smooth as it's going right now it's probably not gonna be too long right so now we have that run the program and we can test it So this still works, and back button, perfect. just 21 days to get to it all right now yeah so uh, tweet tag supports closing to tray the problem is that when you close to tray the actual icon disappears from uh, the taskbar but if you paint the icon, it's gonna stay there and it will look like the program is actually closed. So I paint this, close it, and now it's in the tray. So if I run it again, it's not going to work because Visual Studio is using VS Host. Rid of the hosting process and try again. Right, so not actually running the process. And now, if I run it again, it will try to run the process, but there's protection so that you cannot run two instances of tweet deck in this case. This, the name change helps me run both of the programs at once without having the folders clash. So if I close it, it will terminate the process that's currently sitting in tray. Maybe. Or not. I think it has a, a problem with the tray. 
Huh. All right. Anyways, the uh, here is the locking mechanism. So if uh, right, this for restarting. If we cannot lock. Need to figure out if it's running in the tray. We need access to the locking process. and yeah that's nice B sharper is great without that Visual Studio will barely be usable sadly it costs a lot of money but since I'm in university I can use it for free totally recommend if you're in university or have like a couple hundred dollars to spare every year or whatever slightly annoying breakpoint break here so that I can see whatever I could use to help me with um, determining whether the process is frozen or if it's just in tray. Actually I'm gonna run uh, gonna run it from here first And now if I run it from Visual Studio, it will break over here. Unless uh, Visual Studio tries to uh, replace the exe file, which means that I'm gonna have to run it from a different place. Yeah. Because it cannot access the file. So just run it from a different place. And now we can. Right, so uh, right now the process is not in tray, so it still has a window. If I close it to tray, it shouldn't have a window anymore, but that may also mean that it's hanging, frozen, which... Um, wouldn't be fun yeah so now the window handle is zero so the question is how the fuck do I tell it to go back
Like, is there a way I can communicate with it? Like, send it an event, maybe? Right, I'm gonna show this here so you can see what I'm trying to find out. So if I had access to the window, I could easily bring it up again, but the window doesn't actually exist. How do you send a notification to another process? Send message, but that requires that requires the handle. So that sh should actually be fine. Right. So I got native methods over here. Nothing for send message, so I just add that. I just copy the thing. It's in the uh, documentation, anyways. So now I'm gonna find all of the messages. Yeah. interesting. You can send a message to every single window. Nice. Okay, system defined messages. Wonder if it will let me use my own message or if I should just use something that uh, they have created.
Why my website looks so bad? Because I'm a shitty designer. Obviously. Okay, let's see window messages. You know what? I I'm gonna try this first just to make sure that it'll actually do something. So over here, we will have the message processing. I might just steal this ID. doesn't have a window and if it's not frozen okay if it's responding Then we will send a message to the handle. close this okay so if I run this twice, huh? Oh, I already had it, had it running. Okay. So if I run this now after I rebuilt it, height the tray and run it again it should have sent the message to the handle the like problem is that it's not generating anything in the log I don't think it actually received the message Does that require a window or can it just be? Hmm. Oh, that could be useful. So I register 
a custom message. And then I can broadcast the message to every single window, even the invisible and hidden ones. Probably. Right. Uh, that's that value. So, get the broadcast, and it's supposed to be a pointer. And now we have to get the custom message stuff working. Can be a string, I guess. That should work. It's an unsigned integer. Okay. Now we send the message to a... Uh... Huh, okay. How the fuck do I get... Because it generates a unique ID for it. How do I know it's my message? It's an unsigned integer. Sure. It'll be fine. I registered the window message at the beginning and store it somewhere. Now I can uh, check over here. Actually, I can uh, already like Can I just restore it from somewhere? How have I done this? Tree icon here. Just, uh, restore. Uh, 
restore it and oh right that's an event so I already have the tray icon somewhere click restore and empty the event arguments Right. I highly doubt this is going to work, but we can try. So run this actually. I'm gonna do a build so I can run it from a different place. Now I can just replace my old installation. All right, so this is the original window. Now I close it goes down to tray I break point over here okay so I got the unique message ID it's nice the main window handle is zero Alright, let's continue. Fuck, that worked! Okay. <laughs> right. I genuinely didn't expect that. Alright, so... Now, if I just run program it will restore the original window <laughs> all right oh and i need to turn this shit off because it's really annoying disabled and i misclicked <laughs> holy shit okay so now we got yeah, all of these changes because of the automated refactoring. Remove the logging. Yeah, I actually got the log in my other place. Hey, that worked. Message received. <laughs> wow. All right. So get rid of the logging word. The fuck did I have it here? Update, please. Now broadcast everything. Uh, yeah, my hacky bullshit. I feel like I should comment this because. Huh. Right. Oh, and I need to uh, re edit the hosting process. Rebuild, just in case. Uh, whatever, just discard that file. Check everything again, and hang on. 
it should also work with minimizing, right? Sure. Let's just push it. I've tested this enough. sense closed on tray uh, whatever I didn't make the title sync all right that took a little longer than I expected but um, I guess I should have expected that worked out surprisingly well though so let's do issues finished All support, I think Twitter added post support to TweetDeck itself. I haven't actually really tried it. I guess I can test it. If I, uh, if I can remember any recent polls. I think Nart Cubed had a ball at some uh, point in history recently ish. Actually, I'm gonna run it on uh, Twitter so I can see it immediately. Okay, yeah, I see a poll. All right, June 24. Somewhere around here. Hang on. Right. Okay, nice. That actually works now. I add him to the actual timeline. User, where is that? That should show up. Uh, over here somewhere. Yeah, the slight problem is that it doesn't say that it's actually a ball. If you go into it, it will show the votes. Can you vote? Like. All right, let's find out. Okay. I cannot actually create a poll from here. This can go away. So I, uh, I will log into Twitter and create a poll there. Uh, 
okay, this is my alt account. Oh, right. It's in an anonymous mode, so I don't get automatically logged in. Alright. I guess creating polls would be a requirement to consider TweetDuck uh, compatible with polls. How does this work? Okay, the problem is that I cannot actually vote in my own poll. I didn't quite think this through. But... Hmm... <laughs> like, I have a bunch of accounts, but I cannot really use them. Can someone make a poll and post a link to it uh, in the chat? Assuming someone is still watching and has Twitter and doesn't mind getting uh, a random bullshit tweet on it. Hmm. I could maybe have it on the... Oh, thanks Garrett. Alright. And that is anonymous one again. All right. So now, if I go to uh, here, okay, add user. Right. So this still doesn't show it's a poll. Okay. Hmm. Vote on Twitter. So it doesn't quite work. I can see the poll, but I cannot vote in a Twitter itself. Hmm. I'm not gonna work on it now, although. Okay, let's see if could, could the website refresh. Um the tweet deck um The thing is I am uh, not using any of the APIs myself. So tweet deck itself doesn't allow Voting in polls, Twitter API probably could. The thing is, the source code of TweetDeck is like two megabytes unpacked. So trying to figure out how that shit works is a lot of annoying work. Okay, so does it say anything in the data here? It doesn't say it's a poll. That is a problem, because then I could at least, like, try to hack this shit in somehow. And those are the actions. Nothing uh, interesting here. Time. It's just the user info. The tweet body itself doesn't have any indication that this is a poll. 
which means... Uh, it's gonna be a lot of pain, so I'm not gonna do it today. And considering that waiting has sort of worked so far, I might just wait until Twitter actually implements it on their own. The funny thing is that uh, people using TweetDeck will uh, attribute Twitter doing stuff to TweetDeck to me. So uh, as soon as the all started sort of working, I already got like, hey, I already got a tweet like, hey, thanks for making the polls work. Yeah, took took a lot of work. Thanks. Appreciate. Well, I could look a little bit into this, just in case anyone's interested. They have a REST API, that is a good sign. The thing is, if I just... Um, if I checked every single tweet to see if it's a poll or not, I would probably run out of... The, yeah, they have a rate limit. 15 minute windows. So that's 15 calls every 15 minutes or 180. That's not really going to work for uh, this until they actually add at least an indication of, of the type of the tweet. they have anything with balls? It doesn't really seem like it. What would this do? Hmm. It sort of feels like... Oh, here we go. Okay, so the ball is actually an iframe. Why? This feels really hacky. Yeah, that's the ball. I'm gonna vote just to see what happens. I got an API call. Oh, it's the uh, it's the cards API. So first I got a get request and then I sent my vote. So I posted my selected choice. Nice. Huh. So this actually, if, if I was able to determine whether a tweet has a poll or not somehow easily without running out of the limits on uh, the API, or uh, just generally creating a request for every single tweet is a really bad idea. But if Twitter adds at least an indication, I could definitely make this work quite easily. Just embed the iframe into the tweet, like... like... If I go here... Open this... Ah, this mess where... Uh... Alright. If I just add the... thing... The iframe into here. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I guess it doesn't actually load. Yeah, I'm not sure how I can... Oh, reload frame. No? Oh. Might be a problem because of uh, the domain. Not entirely sure how uh, this would work, but maybe it's not loading because it's on a different domain. So that's just a sub subdomain change. It shouldn't really matter. I'm feeling it might just be a little broken. Hmm. Not sure. This loads. I'm gonna try if that's a bug in uh, in Firebug or if it's just something with the domain. I don't know. Let's delete this. Put it back, it's loading. Yeah, this might be the reason Twitter hasn't implemented it on TweetDeck or TweetDeck yet. Right. So that's gonna be put on hold for a little longer. I guess I'll look into the plugin system a little more. As I said, I want to get the minimum version working. So right now we are on uh, whatever the fuck, 1.2.3. So how would I make this work in a nice way? Right, plugin to the website. Default to a star, which is wildcard. Since the version is not going to uh, just change while it's actually running, I will store the data in a variable. Naming variables, the ultimate struggle of programming, especially when you're trying to talk. Live stream. Uh, This value just return that. Otherwise, uh, we are gonna check the version. So for that, I'm probably gonna want. Where could I sneak method? Maybe. Okay, I already got a lot of bullshit over here. So.
and return that. Uh, all right. Has value merch. Nice. Thanks for making my job easy. <laughs> yeah, resharper is great. So guess I should like have some sort of validation so uh, if you put some bullshit in there it's not it's gonna throw an error I have something like that What happens if I don't have a name tag? And this doesn't need to have anything, whatever. Just needs to exist. The plugin manager. Right. Will this crash? Oh, yeah. Actually, it will. It's got the error here. Well, I may as well show it. Right, I should fix that. Oh yeah, but now that uh, it's loaded, I can at least check what happens if uh, if a plugin is invalid. It's probably not a good sign for a programmer to go like, hmm. I wonder how this thing that I made like two days ago works. Right, so it's just not there. Fun thing, if I... If I just do this. And I reload all the plugins. And it's missing a name. Oh right, I forgot that this is actually in a completely different folder, so I'm going to update this. Why can I open a new window? It's weird. Window management, nice. Official test, replace these files. So now we have awesome. Not that it actually does anything, but I just wanted to test the reloading. Hey, uh, so uh, Tweety Duck, I said it at the beginning of the stream, but Tweety Duck is basically a wrapper for the Tweety Duck website with a lot of additional features uh, because Twitter a couple months ago discontinued the original desktop client for Windows so I was like nah I'm not gonna allow you to do that because I really like my fucking Twitter client so I just did this in like three days and uh, you can you can find it on this website, source code is available and everything. Probably should have mentioned that at the beginning of the stream. Anyways. You can 
close this and right so before I go anywhere I need to find this hang on so what's actually generating the error right get directory name no file name because in order to get the name of the directory you use get file name not get directory name because get directory name returns the parent directory isn't that fun uh, you know what I'm gonna work on this for a little bit and at the end of the stream I'm gonna show you the hackiest bullshit that I've ever created. Just realized it could be actually fun to see um, how much horrible stuff you can do within a, a second in CPU time. Right, so I fixed the error. I'm gonna push that actually since I have a crashing plugin I should test it. Yeah, I could put some info down below the stream, but that requires some actual effort. Right, so that works. By the way, the dramatic music in the background is the soundtrack from uh, the Talos Principle. Great game, and I actually got the permission to use the music on my streams from the composer. So thank you, Damian. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his last name because I would totally butcher it. But thanks, thanks to that guy. Yeah, not all that familiar with creation uh, pronunciation. Right. So now I can... Alright. Actually, this sounds like... I could use a... Uh, new class to handle versions or maybe C sharp already has something the framework uh, version class something Why recreate the wheel? Because my wheel is gonna be the fucking best wheel. Oh, nice! So we got I comparable. So I can compare versions. I can initialize a version from a string. Oh, this is beautiful. Alright, alright. So, let's check this out. This is C sharp in a command line. You, you will get it if you install mono. It's pretty handy. So we got version and system. So save on D3. Perfect. So now we can access 
data build and revision is negative one. Okay. So I can check if this version is bigger than say uh, 1.2.2 which is true it's bigger or equal 1.2.3 but not bigger or equal than uh, 1.2.4 also does this work no huh all right anyways i shouldn't have I shouldn't have zeros in the names anywhere. Zero and one. If I switch that. Okay. Good thing I checked. Yeah. It uh overloads all of the operators. Nice. More you know. So if um right, I need to make a separate variable for this anyways. So requires Requires this a shitty name. But, uh, or if. Yeah. Auto formatting is a little annoying. But it can either. The string can either equal a star or. which is a wild card or it can uh, be a valid version hello no you won't let me do that try parse is static it should totally work Oh, don't tell me they added it only for Net Framework 4.6 or something. <sighs> Alright, Net Framework 4. It's a static member, it's public, why can't I use it? Oh, the shit is here. Ah, uh, that's why. Right, so try parse this. Either okay, we're gonna crash if the required version is empty or if it's neither a star nor a valid version. All right, Thank you. 
now let's rename that. So either it's a star. Oh, also I should uh, use string comparison because languages are fun, right? Because uh, Okay, check out this character. This is an I, right? And this is also an I, but it's it's a Turkish lowercase I, I think. So if you convert an uppercase I to lowercase in a Turkish system, you will get this instead of this. So instead of using the uh, current culture, we're gonna use ordinal to compare it exactly by the character. It's not really needed for comparing it to a star, but otherwise code analysis here will complain about it. So if it's either a star or Version. is bigger or equal qualifier is redundant are you sure all right no way this is gonna ever get confusing version tag okay Yeah, that looks about correct. So... If the plugin is... If the plugin requires a newer version... I'm gonna add some... Uh, warning. This also means that I won't be able to use letters in version numbers, right? This shouldn't work. Yeah. It's an invalid version. So I will have to keep that in mind. Knowing myself, I will probably fuck it up at some point. So when I initialize the plugin manager, if I'm if I'm debugging, I will parse the version tag. So this will run fine. It started, it's running fine. But if I uh, have an invalid version tag, you know what? Actually, this won't really be needed. I could just do this. version from the version tag and then use this in uh, the plugin here so that I don't create a new version every single time nice so now if I fuck the version up it will immediately crash yep Perfect. So now I'm gonna look into the UI. This is the 
plugin control. Close everything else. I guess I could make the name red and change the description. It's updated. Right, so a plugin cannot run. I will change the name color. System colors, nah. Red. That's a very bright red. Uh, let's check out the uh, color list. Yeah, color list by name. nice it's nice and dark although dark red is a little brighter just a little bit okay let's try dark red and the plugin description we have the plugin that requires a version that doesn't exist. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I shouldn't actually use it in uh, the code generator. So, if that is empty, or the plugin cannot run, we will ignore it. Just just to make sure that it's actually ignoring the plugin. We will add a little notification. Alright, let's test this shit. Okay. Right. Let's try to figure out what went wrong. I didn't load the tag, did I? I didn't actually load the tag. But this thing is here. Yes. No, it's loading the tag, definitely. Otherwise, this wouldn't have worked before. So the problem is here. Right, can run is null right now, it's fine. Required version 1.2. All right, this is the uh, this plugin. Right, required version 1.2.4. So 
So if I try check required, required version 1.2.4 as I flipped the thingy, yes. All right. Actually, to make it right, so now I can go back, delete the breakpoint because now it's totally going to work. And the music has stopped. I'll just shuffle. Alright. Yep, looks like it's working. I need to hide the disable button though, because it's not actually running. So if it cannot run, uh, visible, Should make it visible or just disable the button. Also, I still want to try how just plain red is going to look. That's a little too bright. Uh, but I should. Okay, so if I'm going to just disable button, I should make sure that it has the correct text. Hmm. I guess. No, I want implementation. Should I implement it here or just in the GUI? I mean, I'm not really doing anything. Well, if the button is disabled, I can't click it. So that shouldn't be a concern. Login config here. It's enabled if it's disabled and if it can run. All right, that should be it. Nice. Okay. Nobody's gonna notice this. this. Didn't happen. Right. So I can delete the test plugin. And remove this. And check out the things, push them to git, and I guess then I can show you the really hacky bullshit that I made. Okay, this is all fine. All right. Just 
Not name, okay. And push. Right, so this is like the very basic plugin system. I guess I can add this. Can I make this smaller? Not really. Ah, okay. It's fine. Is anyone watching actually a developer who would be interested in making plugins? So I'm really like not sure what else would be needed for it. Right now at least. I guess this is like the very rough base. I guess one thing that I should probably work on is error handling, because it is all compiled into this the single script. And I'm not sure what happens if there is a syntax error somewhere in there. Like, okay, it will obviously not run at all none of the plugins, but when you're developing a plugin uh, it would be really useful to have the development utilities. Uh, not sure. Alright, anyways. It's time to show you the real hacky bullshit. So, <laughs> there's one feature that was sort of missing from a Tweety deck. It turns out it's really fucking useful. So if you make a new tweet, you can add an image, right? But if you have an image in your clipboard, let's say... I uh, copy this delicious looking pizza, if I just... Open image in browser. So you can copy the image and then have it in my clipboard, right? Maybe get a little slice of the image, copy that. But I am really lazy and I don't want to bother creating a file, right? 
So what I'm gonna do is just press Ctrl V and it pastes the image. It looks really smooth and like it looks like it was just there, right? Like it's a native feature. If I do the same here, sadly it doesn't work. Should also work if I right click and press paste. Yep. So to make this work, I had to go through a lot of really hacky bullshit. Also, I can paste more. Let's just add another image. You can just keep adding. I cannot add a duplicate image. I can also print screen this window. If you can see it there. This is really fucking useful and I'm using it all the time. The thing is, the code for it is a little horrible. Is I think a um, very mild way to put it. So what happens is, I'm gonna open code.js. This is the JavaScript file that is injected into the Tweetedic website runtime. So there is a very useful thing in JavaScript which is the paste event, right? So if JavaScript detects that you are trying to paste something either into a... Uh, uh, I closed it again either into the main thingy area, yeah, sure, either here, or you can also, you can also have inline comments, so you can uh, add images and paste into here, right? So if it detects that it's trying to do that, the problem is JavaScript doesn't really have a good and reliable way of getting the image from the clipboard. That stuff is handled by the browser, usually, and the embedded framework can't really make it work. I, I think the main problem is that it expects and upload, so the website itself isn't really ready for it. So what I do is I go to the C# -sharp code. Dollar uh, dollar TD is the bridge object. If over here, and this is what communicates between uh, the C# -sharp, the UI, and the JavaScript code running on the actual website. So it calls try paste image. Turns out you cannot use the clipboard in a different thread. And the embedded framework, the Chromium engine is running on a different thread. So I go back to the UI thread. I check if the clipboard contains an image. And I create a temporary file. Uh, should be in temp here. So here are all the images, right? That it generated so far. And I save it as PNG. And then I go and call back. What this does is it tells the browser to execute a script. So I called I call try paste image, which is over here. What this does is, if you look into the inline text box, you might see a little problem. Because there isn't actually a button to add an image, right? So if I go here, there isn't a button to add an image. But there is a pop out button which moves it over here, and then you can add an image. So if you are here and you paste, 
this script will detect whether you are in the inline or in the main box. And if you are in inline, it will automatically pop out. Smooth, right? So what happens is it clicks the pop-out button and then it clears the uh, base element it saved. Because it had to know that you were last in uh, this element right here, so it wouldn't have to search too much to find this button, right? There was a problem when I was developing it, because, you know, I can intercept upload dialogs, right? So if you click add another image, I can intercept this and basically give it a file. I can already give it a file and it will just accept it. The small problem is that you cannot do that from within JavaScript. Chromium has protection, so you cannot actually trigger this button from JavaScript. That's a bit of a problem, right? And since you can't really interact with the button from C Sharp other than use JavaScript, what would be the probably only solution? Well, we can sort of rely on the position of the button and we can simulate a mouse click. No way this could ever go wrong, right? <laughs> so I wait until the drawer, as you can see, hopefully on the stream, that this is an animation, right? And I want it to look nice, so I didn't skip the animation. But I have to wait for the drawer to pop out and then I run the click upload function. What this does is it finds the add image button and it gets this little picture, right? Because just in case there would be probably some problems with like clicking in the very corner of this. So it gets the picture which is like over here. It gets the position. Another problem, if you are in a window like this, you can't see the button. How can you click the button if you can't see it? So I get this scrolling element and I see how far scrolled up it is. Then I automatically scroll down to this image so that it is in view. And I save the position of it and tell the C sharp code via the bridge object that it should click on this position relative to the window. And you can see that if I actually paste an image, you, maybe you could see that, but it, uh, I can show it again. It scrolls down automatically. It's it like takes a split second to work because the communication within threads takes a little bit of time. So you can sort of see it, but unless you have a really small screen, you won't notice it. So it goes on to tell, click upload image. So we go back to the bridge object. So we get the cursor position. And of course, you can have the window pretty much anywhere. And the JavaScript frontend only has knowledge about the inside of the window. So I figure out where the screen is and I offset the point so that it points relatively to the window position. And then I simulate a mouse click. Would you believe that uh, there are mice which have the buttons switched? I am left-handed, so I happen to have such mouse. Windows isn't quite prepared for it. 
So, if I detect that the mouse buttons are swapped, instead of clicking the left button, I have to click the right button on the mouse using the simulated click, and that will actually click the left button. Does that make sense? It's a fucking nightmare. So I use the Win API, I use the library files to simulate a mouse event at the position. Everything is fine. So then I go and what happens next? I call the finish function. But before that happens, I have a dialog handler. So this is what intercepts the upload dialog. It just checks if there is a recently created file from the clipboard. It will give it the file name and reset the file so that you cannot paste the du a duplicate image multiple times. So that's what intercepts the dialog and then, then it calls the finish function which is somewhere in here. Yeah, and the finish function scrolls the thing back up so that you won't stay uh, you won't stay at the position where you could see the this button over here if you're like this because then you would be like if we go to an even bigger extreme and I actually based an image you would be like here and you wouldn't be able to see the text so it just scrolls back and puts focus back into this uh, element right because when you simulate a click it actually takes focus away from this so I have to put it back after all of the upload dialogue Oh shit, it's processed. So this is still a thing. If I close this, it gets deleted. Just temporary files. Uh, the 10 millisecond delay is completely arbitrary, but it works. Somehow, all of this bullshit works and I've not had it fail a single time. I have no idea how we managed to do that. But I'm really sort of proud and at the same time kind of disgusted by the abomination that I created. <laughs> right. So I think that's pretty much all I wanted to do for the stream. I'm still getting kind of used to it. I'll probably get a little more into the hardcore coding, full focus, once I get used to streaming. But uh, I guess I'll stay here if anybody has any questions about the code. Maybe aspiring programmers don't. <laughs> if you're an aspiring programmer and you just watched the last 10 20 minutes of me ranting about my bullshit solution, uh, you'll probably experience the same thing. Don't worry about it. You're gonna push horrible things into production. Uh, yeah, if you got any questions, feel free to post them in the uh, in the comments on Twitch. Otherwise, I will shut the stream down in a bit and upload it to YouTube eventually. My upload is shit, so. I'll probably get it running overnight on my Raspberry Pi or something.
Hey there, Lame Dylan. You came a little late. 